Hidden History Beneath Folsom Lake, Hiking Across a Dry Lake Bed in Time of Drought. Written and spoken by Kevin Knaus. The year was 2012 and I was just beginning to realize what a disastrous decision I had made by changing careers. I'm not sure what made me think that selling insurance was the correct career choice for a 49-year-old man. With a dearth of insurance prospects and a dwindling savings account I was using to pay bills, I escaped from the home office to Folsom Lake to hike around and ponder my next move in life. I did not set out on my day hike escapes from reality to document any historical artifacts. I was more interested in finding a quiet place to lie down and die. Suicide seemed like the best option at the time. It was also during this time that California was beginning to be gripped by an epic drought and Folsom Lake was shrinking more and more every summer. With little else to do, and a website I had started for my nascent insurance business, I decided to write some blog posts about my hikes and post pictures of historical structures and features I saw in Folsom's dry lake bed. Over the next five years, I would hike the perimeter of Folsom Lake documenting as many historic and prehistoric structures and sites as I could find. I did not capture every historical site because I may not have been in the right place when the water level was low enough to find it. I also lost many images due to a hard disk crash, but oh well, such is life. Here is what I did see. These images are just a portion of the many photographs I took hiking over several years around Folsom Lake. From Beals Point up to Auburn along the North Fork of the American River. On November 21, 2015, Folsom reached one of its lowest lake elevations in history. The drought had shrunken the lake elevation to approximately 350 feet, and the reservoir stood at 15% of capacity. This allowed hikers such as myself an unprecedented opportunity to view historic and prehistoric sites that were normally hidden beneath Folsom Lake. President Polk confirmed that gold had been discovered in California with this July 20, 1848 map of the upper and lower gold mines along the South Fork of the American. Many of the historic sites that were visible during the drought were a direct result of the gold rush and subsequent mining along the North and South Forks of the American River. I have appended this 1950s Army Corps of Engineers map of the proposed Folsom Reservoir, then being built, with approximate locations of the major water projects constructed along the forks of the American River. These water ditches, or canals, were primarily built in the 1850s to deliver water to the miners who were working the banks and hillsides along the rivers to mine for placer gold. The North Fork Ditch, along the North Fork of the American River, started at a dam up near Auburn and ran all the way down to Beals Bar. The Natoma Ditch, on the South Fork of the American River, began at a dam a couple miles above Salmon Falls and delivered water down to Mormon Island. The Negro Hill Ditch drew its water from the Natoma Dam, but ran on the north side of the South Fork and delivered water to Negro Hill, now referred to as the Peninsula of Folsom Lake. On this tour, I will start near the right wing dam of Folsom Lake, go up the North Fork along the North Fork Ditch, then down the peninsula where I pick up the Negro Hill Ditch, and head east up the South Fork. The final leg will be reviewing the historic sites I documented, beginning at Mormon Island, and then east up the South Fork to the Natoma Dam site. One of the first structures I encountered, and made me want to research the history, was this concrete line canal. It seemed to be headed directly to the right wing dam of Folsom Lake. It is the remnants of the North Fork Ditch. The canal was delivering water to the North Fork Reservoir that is partially buried under the right wing dam. The elevation of the canal at this point is approximately 400 feet above sea level. Before Folsom Lake was finished in 1956, water in the North Fork Reservoir would be directed down Slate Bar Branch along Auburn Folsom Road and into Baldwin Dam to be distributed to Orangevale, Fair Oaks, Citrus Heights, and Carmichael. The North Fork Ditch had several lateral ditch lines. The ditch delivered water down to Beals Bar near the confluence of the North and South Forks of the American River. Construction on Folsom Dam and its many side dams or dikes has erased many parts of the canals and roads in the area. One structure that was not knocked down was the concrete diversion structure near the old North Fork Reservoir. Wooden boards would have been slid into grooves in the structure to divert water either into the reservoir, Beals Bar Branch Line, or over to Baldwin Reservoir. This area is directly south of Beals Point State Park. 
Beginning in the early 1910s, the North Fork Ditch improved much of their conveyance structures by lining the canals with concrete and installing metal flumes across creeks and ravines. This was to stop the estimated 30% water loss due to seepage through the earthen lined canals. It is a rare find on historic structure to have a date inscribed on it, but I found this date of 1915 on a concrete diversion box just north of Beals Point. This concrete structure north of Beals Point was a support for a half-moon metal flume that carried water along the North Fork Ditch over a small gully. This image is looking east on top of Dyke 5. The cuts you see were made by the Army Corps of Engineers to drain water from the base of Dyke 5, created by a small rise in the landscape. You might be able to detect a faint line of dry ground that runs into the circle denoting Rose Springs. From all my research, this should have been the road created by the Sacramento, Placer, and Nevada Railroad that began in Ashland and at this point was following the North Fork Ditch. This 1861 map of the Sacramento, Placer, and Nevada Railroad shows the line as it skirted the North Fork Ditch Reservoir, headed north, then veered northwest past Rose Springs. The railroad line then followed the Allen Ditch, a branch of the North Fork Ditch, northwards up to Miner's Ravine Creek. This 1941 USGS topographical quadrant map illustrates how the Allen Ditch split from the North Fork Ditch and traveled east along an old road, which was most likely the old railroad grade. The elevation marker of 396 is where Dyke 5 is today. Going back to the Dyke 5 photo, you might be able to see a dark line that runs right under the Rose Springs Circle. That is the trickle of water flowing from Rose Springs. This 1887 map of Placer County denotes the town of Rose Springs, the North Fork Ditch, and the Allen Ditch Branch Spur. This was Rose Springs during the drought, still putting out a trickle of water in the middle of August. This small flow of water was able to create a shallow pond that was an oasis for birds and wildlife. At this point in the drought, Folsom Lake was close to a mile to the east. Before Dyke 5 was built, Rose Springs emptied to the west. The little town of Rose Springs, it may not have been more than a collection of houses and barns, also had a community dump. When the sunlight is correct, you will see little sparkles on the ground, pieces of glass reflecting the sunlight. This was a small collection of glassware and pottery I found and stacked on some granite outcroppings nearby. All of the houses and buildings were raised by the Army Corps of Engineers prior to the filling of the dam. Also, all of the trees to 300-foot elevation were cut down. Hence, that is why you see so many tree stumps at Folsom Lake during drought conditions. To the north of Rose Springs is a ridge of granite topped with a layer of soil and cobblestones. The top layer is called Lahar and is the mud and debris flow from thousands of years ago. However, the miners knew from experience that most of the placer gold was deposited on the bedrock of a river. The underlying granite of this ridge may have been an ancient river. On top of the ridge was what was referred to as a coyote hole or a shaft dug down to the granite. Note the round cobblestones embedded in the sides of the mining pit, similar to mine tailings in Folsom and Rancho Cordova. This mine had an exit on the north side of the ridge. The Bureau of Reclamation was keen to learn where this mine shaft may have led and if it posed any hazard to the surrounding dikes. They dumped 2,000 gallons of water into the hole and no one was able to identify where the water exited. Later, after I found the location of Rose Springs, it occurred to me that the water probably bubbled out of the spring which is located directly below the old mine pit. When the lake elevation is below 400 feet, you can see the outlines, if not the actual North Fork Ditch, running along the slopes between Granite Bay and Beals Point. This particular structure was located near where the North Fork Ditch fed a small reservoir and diverted water to the Allen Ditch. The reservoirs were designed to buffer water flows in the system and also to reduce the flow rate so mud could settle out. After the gold rush, many of the miners stayed in the area and developed farms, orchards, vineyards, and ranches. This concrete outline may have been a barn or packing house for a nearby orchard. Of course, before the invasion of the gold miners, Native Americans called this land home. Their indelible mark on the landscape remains in the form of the grinding holes or bedrock mortars used to grind up acorns. 
This set of bedrock mortars is unique in that a large granite boulder was situated in such a way as to provide some shade from the morning sun. Water flow in the canals was powered by gravity. The water ditches were designed with just enough of a gentle slope to keep the water moving at approximately 30 cubic feet per second. Elevation of the water inlet of the North Fork Ditch in Auburn behind the Birdsall Dam was approximately 555 feet. The elevation of the North Fork Reservoir above Beals Bar was about 400 feet. This means the North Fork Ditch only dropped 155 feet of elevation over 22 miles. This required either rock retaining walls or later concrete sides to contain the water if it could not be dug into a hillside. This image shows the concrete side walls of the ditch as it traversed through a field of granite boulders. The 1887 Placer County map prominently noted Rock Springs. Like Rose Springs, just a couple miles to the west, Rock Springs was an artesian well and most vital for travelers for drinking water. And yes, there is a Rock Springs. I captured this image and video as the spring percolated a small but steady stream of water that eventually found its way down to the lake. Right below the North Fork Ditch is the remnants of the Rock Springs house. The final owner was Peter Dickinson. Peter was living with his daughter Edda May when they received an offer from the Army Corps of Engineers in 1952 to purchase the house and hundreds of acres of his ranch, all of which were in the footprint of Folsom Lake. Edda May refused the offer to sell and then regretted her decision. Fearing the government would pay them less than the original offer, Edda May surmised the only solution was to die on the property. To this end, she shot her father Peter, but could not kill herself after she set the house ablaze. She was arrested on the day of the murder and would commit suicide a couple days later up in Auburn at the county hospital. Because of the construction of all the bolt ramps at Granite Bay State Park, not much remains of the North Fork Ditch. The lake level will never get low enough to expose anything of the town of Carrollton. These Native American grinding holes can be seen at the Oak Beach Day Use site. East of Beaks Bight at Folsom Lake, there is one concrete foundation right along the line of the North Fork Ditch. Supposedly, the area was named for a flour mill. Even though the flow in the North Fork Ditch was not swift or strong, many adjacent landowners did construct water wheels powered by its flow. I do not know if this was the case with this structure, but here it stands. Many of the sections of the historic water ditches have been obliterated by the water and waves of Folsom Lake, but occasionally you come across sections that have become a de facto trail with a wall of granite on one side and the concrete wall of the ditch on the opposite. You will also see structures like this one, which may have been a wastegate and or diversion to a farm or mining operation. Note how far above the lake the ditch is in this photo, and even higher above the river when it was constructed. Doton's Bar was a fairly significant mining district along the river. It was opposite today's northern boat launch at the Peninsula Campground. After the Placer Gold was vacuumed up in the riverbed, miners focused on the western riverbank and mined hydraulically. I was amazed at the acres of river cobble mine tailings at Doton's Bar. This part of the river mining was noted for the almost cement-like nature of soil. The consolidated nature of the riverbank is displayed in this odd pillar of earth left standing. I'm not sure if it was a marker between mining claims or something else, but it stuck out like a sore thumb. I found this broken rice bowl near the base of the mined riverbank. Dotons did have a Chinatown, but this old artifact may have washed down from Auburn. This 1954 USGS topographical map shows the general area of my hikes around Kehoe Canyon, Horseshoe Bar, Zontgroff Mine, Goose Flats, Rattlesnake Bar, and Gwyn's Lime Kiln. As this map indicates the high water level of Folsom Lake, you will note that the North Fork Ditch was permanently above the water level north of Rattlesnake Bar. 
In 2020, the Bureau of Reclamation announced that they will be raising the dam three and a half feet, which will inundate more of the North Fork Ditch in future high water lake fills. Today's Anderson Island, when Folsom Lake is full, is the location of Kehoe Canyon, also referred to as the Narrows because the river got pinched between two large outcroppings of granite. This relatively narrow distance between both sides of the river was a good spot for a bridge. This image shows the Placer County side abutment for the bridge over Kehoe Canyon, but it was not a bridge for men or wagons. It was a suspension bridge that carried a water pipe to deliver water to the El Dorado County side. This photo shows the 4-inch cast iron round stock driven into the granite as an anchor for the suspension cables that supported the bridge. From pieces of the old water pipe, it looked to be a 12 to 18 inch in diameter water pipe. It tapped into the North Fork Ditch on the western side and conveyed the water over to the Zontgroff Mine. Preliminary research indicates the bridge and water pipe were built around 1898. This image shows a 10 inch chiseled square into the granite next to the bridge abutment. This would have held the wooden upright post that the suspension cable was draped over before being anchored to the granite. This old photograph shows a much lighter pedestrian suspension bridge over the south fork of the American River, but gives you an idea of how the suspension cables were mounted. The Zontgraft is above the high water level of Folsom Lake, but most of the old mine is within the state park. This is a photo of a stone column that may have been part of the headworks or stamp mill at the Hard Rock Mine. A short distance from Kehoe Canyon is this unique stone aqueduct. However, it doesn't look like it ever conveyed any water of the North Fork Ditch as the canal went around this structure. In addition, there was no cement or mortar in the shallow canal on top of the aqueduct. The water you see at the bottom of the photo is seepage from the lake level on the other side. This close-up view of the stone aqueduct shows no mortar and how smaller rocks were stuffed into the interstitial spaces between the larger granite rocks. Around Horseshoe Bar, the North Fork Ditch had to be cut into the granite. While the river side of the ditch has washed away, the cement lining still remains. High atop a granite pinnacle, I found several Native American grinding holes. It must have been quite a view when pounding the acorns as the river drifted below. While it may not seem historic, I was pretty excited to stand above the North Fork of the American River and watch it flowing freely around Rattlesnake Bar. This has only happened a couple times since Folsom Dam was completed and may never happen again with the increased dam height. During this low lake level, an old river gauging station could be seen on the El Dorado County side of the river. There was not much left of the fabled community of Rattlesnake Bar that I saw but I was able to document the bridge that was named Gwyn's Bridge after the man who rebuilt it after the original had been washed away in floods of 1862. This is the Rattlesnake Bar Bridge abutment on the Placer County side. This image shows the El Dorado County side abutment capped with cement. This is an image of my son when he was about 10 years old on top of the abutment on the Placer County side. It shows how large the bridge was and the span over to El Dorado County. This undated photo from the Library of Congress shows the substantial nature of Gwynn's Bridge over the North Fork of the American River. Mr. Gwynn did not rebuild the bridge after it washed out solely for the community's benefit. He operated a lime kiln in El Dorado County and needed the bridge to easily get his product to market. The source of Gwyn's limestone was the Alabaster Cave and associated deposits of calcium carbonate. The Alabaster Cave was also a huge tourist attraction, so rebuilding the bridge over the North Fork of the American River supported his quick lime business and his tourist attraction. The bridge was brought down by a truck either overweight for the bridge or hitting one of the suspension cables in 1954, causing the bridge to collapse. It was slated to be demolished by the Army Corps of Engineers. The accident just hastened its demise. Hiking north of Avery's Pond, which was a mud settling reservoir for the North Fork Ditch, you come to Mormon Ravine. This photo shows water coming down Mormon Ravine into the river. There are also Native American bedrock mortars not too far from Avery's Pond. 
One source of water that still flows down Mormon Ravine is the PG&E Newcastle Powerhouse. With Folsom Lake having receded from the ravine during the drought, I was able to get right next to the discharge of water from the power plant when it was operating to produce electricity. The North Fork Ditch had a large flume originally made of wood to span Mormon Ravine. This photo shows the 1910s flume improvements that had the ditch lined with concrete and half-moon support for a corrugated metal flume across such ravines. North of Mormon Ravine, the river gets noticeably narrower. The North Fork Ditch had to hug the hillside of the canyon. They then built rock line retaining walls to support the river side of the ditch. This photo shows the later addition of the concrete lining, but with the original hand-placed rock retaining wall still in place. Unless part of the North Fork Ditch washed out due to flooding, it always had water flowing in it. But during low demand periods, like in the winter months, the operators had to balance the flow so as not to have the water overtop the ditch side, causing its own washout. My assumption is that this multi-wear concrete structure, which was just down from the main dam, was used to regulate the dumping of excess flow back into the river. The Birdsall Dam was the last iteration of many dams on the river for the North Fork Ditch. It was the largest and most substantial and completed in 1898. Its location was just in front of the never-completed Auburn Dam, right at the exit of the diversion tunnel for the Auburn Dam construction. The Birdsall Dam was dismantled by the Army Corps of Engineers. I found a nondescript chunk of the dam on the Placer County side marking its location. On the El Dorado County side, you can get to the spot where they anchored the Birdsall Dam to the bedrock.